Marketing, of course, is very important. I don't want to touch these things. Most people think they understand marketing. I think that marketing is one of the most fascinating uh, aspects of doing business because we usually confu uh, confuse marketing with advertising. Most of us do. There are, there are two different things. I mean, advertising is one of the many aspects of marketing. Marketing is also much more. And one of the things that I believe is key to marketing is this one, metrics and measurement. For example, if you decide to do online advertising to uh, collect or to, or to attract people to your websites that offers this uh, cloud tests, and you pay 20 cents per user, are you sure that's a good amount of money to pay? Is it cheap? Is it too expensive? Let me give you an example. How many of you know Dropbox? Raise your hand. Very good. Dropbox uses AWS, so keep using it. Love it. <laughs> anyway, <coughs> Dropbox, when they started, they decided to do online advertising. And their cost of acquiring one customer was close to $400. So their, main, their, their average revenue on a single customer I don't remember the exact number, but was in the range of a few tens of dollars per year. Let's say $50. So if you pay $400 to acquire a customer, and you only can get about $50 out of that customer per year, do you think it's a good way to attract customers? No, it's going to essentially bankrupt you straight away. So they decided to do something else. They introduced something that you should know, which is if someone refers you to Dropbox and you sign up, both you and that person get 250 megabytes for free. That thing costs them, I don't know, a few cents, but they still get about, I don't know, $50 per user per year or something like that. So that way to uh, advertise is actually, we can call it viral marketing or maybe viral online marketing, whatever, was way more effective than advertising, which doesn't mean that advertising is wrong. It just means always measure how you are attracting customers. And if you want to accept a very important advice for you, during the startup weekend, make sure that you when, when you go there, you have a list of friends, not at the startup weekend. Tell these friends, guys, I'm going to the startup weekend this weekend. Please be online at least once or twice during the weekend because I will need your help. And when you have something to sell, even if it's for free but it's uh, a fake money, whatever, try to sell it to your, to your peers, to your friends, and try to use different techniques and see which one sticks. Because even if they are friends, they're going to Sentosa, they're going to the Botanic Garden, they don't have time for you, so only the successful marketing will be able to convince them to join you. So it's also a good test for you, even if they're friends, even if they're not paying for it. And then, of course, sales. How do you manage sales? I'm not an expert in sales, uh, but of course, most companies need to sell things at some point uh, in their life. Ask yourself, what are you selling exactly? Who buys? Why? that person buys it and how to measure it, measuring all the time, every time. In this case, uh, I'm selling uh, not cloud quits because people are not buying the quits. People are buying the certificate that says you passed those quits. So I'm selling reputation. Who buys? People that probably need their reputation in their business. Why? Because they can sell more of their expertise. How to measure it? And then, of course, you can find techniques. Uh, there is also another part that is media or PR, so public relations, etc., bloggers, journalists, etc. I'm not going to touch it uh, uh, today. It's something that you will uh, deal with eventually, but I don't think you will have any experience during this hard weekend, so let's just uh, take it for granted for now. And then, of course, at some point, you want to go global. So, how can you go global, and what it means from an IT perspective to go global? Uh, and of course, you might also need to uh, discuss with your team 
not during the startup weekend, but in real life, usually with real startups. <coughs> Legal aspects, tax issues in uh, selling things elsewhere, etc. I'm not going to talk about this. It's definitely not my expertise. But I can talk about this later in, uh, for a few minutes. How cloud computing can actually help you deliver your services globally, even from day one, and even in just a few minutes. And then, of course, at some point, you might need to attract angels or investors uh, or venture capitals because you want to really grow your business and you might need some extra capital to make sure that you can grow fast. You should ask yourself, why should they be interested? You should train yourself in doing the elevator pitch. Let me give you an example of the elevator pitch. So are you all familiar now with this idea of uh, these quits? to assess your cloud uh, skills and that people can uh, do the quits and then pay for it and then get a certification. Are you familiar with this? Yes? Okay. Let's imagine that I want a rich guy as a volunteer, a very rich guy. Come on, a very rich guy. <laughs> well, no, I might be here, don't worry. Some are very rich. Okay, let me pick uh, Rick. All right, famous uh, billionaire. Rick, can you please stand up? Okay, Rick is a venture capital. He's just visiting Singapore. He invested in the hottest uh, startups in the U.S. He's like full of money. Uh, you might actually need to help him spend his money. <laughs> anyway, Rick is walking on the street, and I have like 20 seconds to sell him my idea. So we walk very slowly there. Rick, it's a pleasure to meet you. I know that you're busy, and I would like to share my idea with you. I built a company that is offering a certification for cloud expertise. People can take quizzes, they can pass them, and if they do, they will receive a certification. And of course, I charge them for this. It's a good idea and I'm looking for investors. Would you be interested in knowing more? And of course, he's going out of the door <laughs> and I will never see him again. No, of course, I'm kidding. Rick, please, come. <laughs> this is the elevator pitch. You don't have to tell everything. The investor needs to know what product are you selling? What problem you are solving? Who is going to buy it? And how are you going to make money? If you don't fail in these four things, if you tell him enough to make him curious, then you might tell, he might tell you, okay, tell me more about it. And maybe you have two more minutes and maybe you can dig into more details. That's the elevator pitch. And I didn't rehearse this, so it was okay. But if you're looking for funds, you have to do this game 50 times and that will drastically improve your chances of getting funded or at least chances to get a real meeting with a VC. This is a crucial part. Most people underestimate the importance of this part. They have a wonderful product, they just forget about this and that's where many startups actually fail to really scale. And then you launched, congratulations, this is the first part of the journey. Keep uh, iterating, innovating, improving your offering rapidly and based on data. Remember this. Now, this is the end of the first part. I did it in uh, 50 minutes, which is good, which means I have, in theory, another 40 minutes to talk about Amazon Web Services. I don't want to talk for 40 minutes. I think you're tired enough. So we'll talk about Amazon Web Services only for 20 minutes. And then, of course, if you have questions about this, ask these questions before I start talking about Amazon Web Services. So now, any questions? <coughs> yes? What you just spoke? Yes? Well, um, kind of when you said that this is a game, treated as a game. At the same time, we're saying the, the best idea will actually be turn into a real company. So if you treat it as a game, as a game you may end up with a problem if it actually does turn into a company. As far as like you have five people working on something, and at the end, like you have to decide who actually owns the idea. How do you treat it as a game, and at the same time, actually treat it as a real? Uh, so when I say you treat it as a game, it doesn't mean don't take it seriously. It means other people that you probably don't know are spending their weekends in this place trying to learn something. Maybe a good idea will come out of this, and that idea will eventually become a business. Maybe. But the very important thing is that if you take things too seriously, 
you are going to interfere with other people and their desire to have fun first and then eventually create a real business. Remember that this is two days. It's very unlikely that in two days you can build something complete, even if you can do it in five minutes. But of course, you know, it's just a very rough version of something. The most important thing that you can take from a startup weekend is actually the people that you know and the things that you learn along the way. And you can learn a lot of things also about you as a wannabe entrepreneur or someone that is already an entrepreneur but wants to try to be an entrepreneur again because these people don't know you and you have to work with them. If you have a team of, let's say, these five people here, these four people and myself, and I assume I'm the entrepreneur, I have to find a way to deal with these people with different personalities. I have to convince them, I have to lead them to believe in my idea and to go through this process. So it's a fantastic experience per se. If then something good happens, it's up to you guys to decide how you want to deal with it. Maybe you meet on Monday morning and you say, guys, our idea was actually nice. In theory, from what I know, and I'm not a legal person, you are entitled to 20% each of whatever you did for, for that weekend. But I'm not a legal person, so don't take this as a good advice. I really don't know about any legal stuff. I just want to avoid the conversation entirely. But, so, so that, what you just say, should that be interpreted as, as you actually have a real idea that you took very seriously and actually want to build it to a company, don't work on it during that weekend? Not necessarily. It depends. It's up to you. If you want to protect your idea, maybe it's good to not use it during the start of the weekend because if you work with other people on that idea, they, of course, claim part of that idea. If you, have, if you think you have a good idea, keep it for yourself. If your fear is that other people might want to take part of that idea. Or maybe you can say during your pitch, by the way, this remains my idea. If you want to work with me, you have to remember that at the end of the weekend, it's going to be my idea. And maybe nobody will join you. It's up to them. <laughs> Yes, but at the same time, I can assure you that in I did many startup weekends, uh, I think eight or nine uh, in the last few years, in uh, every continent essentially. And uh, almost, I would say, all, yeah, almost at every startup weekend, there was at least one team that. Uh, Let's say on Monday morning they met and said, okay, you know guys, let's, let's continue this. It's a good idea. And the fact that the team wanted to continue it, it means that uh, they liked the idea and the fact that they were working together on that idea. So you also found great co-founders for that idea. <coughs> if, that's your, if you think your idea is great, which I think it's uh, a very ambitious assumption, but I don't know you, so you might be super right. If you think your idea is super great and you want, just want to keep it for yourself, don't don't share it uh, with people at Star Weekend. No, it's a general question. Um, another thing is that um, again, the idea, right? It, it, you know, it, somebody will come up and present that idea. And, you know, so idea is actually comes from the person who may have good ideas. Yes. A matching of a team is kind of a random event, right? In this uh, in this uh, startup weekend. So and, and the team in the startup. Is, is crucial for the success of a startup. So yes. because you, you may not be even controlling who you work with, right? So what are the chances of, from your experience of actually the uh, right people falling into the same team? I think it's up to you. I mean, it's uh, a talent to be able to attract the talents that you need. But you don't, you don't know, basically, uh, again, correct me if I'm wrong, the ideas that you're written on the board, and the people will say, I want to work on this idea. Yes. You really don't know any of these people. Well, you usually see someone pitch the idea. So you have a first impression. It might be wrong, it might be right. And again, this is probably a testament to the fact that you don't have to take it too seriously. You can't pretend that all ideas should become businesses on Monday morning. The first thing that I suggest you to look for is to learn, have fun, and meet people. If it happens that you also have a good idea and it works, great. But it's not the main mission. That's my view, of course. I mean, you might have your own view. You might see it differently. It's up to you guys. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm just sharing my experience.